The world is divided into things that look designed, like birds and airliners, and things that don't, rocks and mountains. Things that look designed are divided into those that really are designed, submarines and tin openers, and those that aren't designed but look that way because they result from Darwinian natural selection, sharks and hedgehogs. The diagnostic of things that look or are designed is that their parts are assembled in ways that are statistically improbable in a functional direction. They do something well, for instance, fly, as in a plane, designed, or bird, not designed. But what makes for success in the business of life varies from species to species. Some fly, some swim, some walk, some climb. Some root themselves into the soil and tilt green solar panels toward the sun. All this diversity stems from successive branchings, starting from a single bacterium-like ancestor which lived between three and four billion years ago. Successful genes, that is genes that program embryos to develop into adults who successfully reproduce, automatically survive in the gene pool at the expense of genes that fail. The difference between successful and unsuccessful genes really matters because genes are replicators. They make accurate copies which potentially last through evolutionary time. But genes aren't the only replicators. There are two kinds of replicator that we can leave behind us, genes and memes. Memes spread through human culture as genes spread through the gene pool. Memes can be good ideas, good tunes, good poems, as well as driveling mantras. Anything that spreads by imitation, as genes spread by bodily reproduction or by viral infection, is a meme. As with genes, we can expect the world to become filled with memes that are good at the art of getting themselves copied from brain to brain, or blog to blog. It's enough that memes vary in their infectivity or spreadability for Darwinian selection to get going. We may think this spreading for the sake of spreading rather futile, but nature is not interested in our judgments, whether of futility or anything else. If a piece of code has what it takes, it spreads, and that's that. The spread of virus genes is also futile in the same sense. Back in 1976, I compared the spread of a meme to the spread of a virus, and I even referred to certain ideas, such as religious ideas, as viruses of the mind. Memes do the same as genes, only by different routes, and they potentially survive bodily death just as genes do. If you contribute to the world's culture through memes, they may live on intact long after your genes have dissolved in the common pool. Socrates may or may not have a gene or two alive in the world today, as I quoted from a great biologist in The Selfish Gene. But who cares? The meme complexes of Socrates, Leonardo, Copernicus and Marconi are still going strong. As for me, I'd rather spread memes than genes anyway. But the very idea of the meme has itself mutated and evolved in a new direction. An internet meme is a hijacking of the original idea. Instead of mutating by random chance before spreading by a form of Darwinian selection, internet memes are altered deliberately by human creativity. In the hijack version, mutations are designed, not random, with the full knowledge of the person doing the mutating. In some cases, this can take the form of genuinely creative art. But now that I think about it, mightn't somebody argue that all creative art comes about through something like a mutation in the mind?
Mutation in the mind. Mutation in the mind. Mutation. Mutation in the mind. 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 